Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So I have a relatively simple machining project that I want to tackle today, and that is the swivel base for our big hardtail vise. Now, I say relatively simple because what needs to be done to this part right here is pretty simple, and we could definitely go over to our manual mill to do this, but I am continuing to train and learn how to use Fusion 360 for our CAD cam and of course, using our CNC machines. So every one of these projects like this that I have in the shop that I'm working on, that I'm building for myself, is another subject that we can take in there to the computer and practice using Fusion 360 and to come out here and hopefully tackle it on our CNC machines. This project here is, is no different. So again, working with Kevin over mechanicaladvantage.com, we get together every week and I show him the project that I'd like to tackle, and he helps me, we go in there, and he helps guide me through the process of sketching everything out and, and making a, an actual program that I can run on the machine. So it's been very helpful. So even something as simple as what we're gonna be doing right here, which is just cleaning up this face down here, we need to take this face down about 50 thou. Even something as simple as that is continuing to help me each and every week uh, be more familiar with the software and how to use it. And I'm hoping that I can eventually get to the point pretty soon where I don't have to have somebody holding my hand and telling me and reminding me, oh, to do this, you need to do this, or you need to click on this. It's gonna be the repetitious use on the weekly basis, daily basis, weekly basis, so that I can remember how to use Fusion to uh, build out these programs here. But I wanted to share with you uh, what we're gonna be doing and we'll take you over to the machine. And, and I, I don't think it's gonna take very long. This is probably only gonna take about five, six minutes to machine, if that. But I wanted to share that with you and bring you along for the project, all right? I do have a couple of hand sketches here that I've been working on to help build the model in the, uh, in the Fusion 360. So pull you in a little bit tighter. Let's talk about what we have to do and the, the dimensions that I took down to help draw this in Fusion 360. All right, so our counterbore there is what we're working on. And to give you a reminder, we've got our swivel bolt that we machined on our Miltronics, and that goes through this bore right there. And what we need to do is take about 50 thousandths out of this face right here, because the swivel bolt needs to tighten down onto this shoulder right here, not this shoulder. You're not pulling this down to where it's tightening up against this. All this does is lock down to this shoulder, and you'll have I don't know, about 25 thousandths of float in between this face and this shoulder just to keep the two pieces together, the main body of the vise and the swivel base. It just, it just holds them together. That's all that the uh, swivel bolt really does there. But we do need to take that down. And I thought that while we're at it, why not go ahead and let's use that same, you know, helical tool path that we're gonna be using here. Let's go ahead and clean up this area of the casting. It doesn't have to be machined. It's not even on the print that it has to be machined. I just wanted to do it for a little bit of fun using that helical tool pattern. And uh, I haven't made a cut like this on the CNC machine myself yet. So I was looking forward to doing that. So the way the program will work, it's gonna come in here, hopefully, if, if I have everything right, it's gonna cut this side wall. It's gonna take approximately a 16th out of all the, the, the side. It'll come down, it'll cut this face down to our depth, our finished depth, which would be about 50 thousandths below this. And then we'll come in here, we'll cut a chamfer on that hole, and that's it, end of the program. So going into the computer, what I did was I just made a couple of rough sketches. This one right here is a good example of the dimensions that I took as cast, is what I call it. So this diameter up here, the lower diameter down inside there, and the depth. I wrote all that down, and then I wrote what I want my finished dimensions to be at once the tool comes in here and cuts it. So I use that. We made another little simple hand sketch right here that just kind of gives your overall dimensions. You know, I didn't worry about putting all these curves and shapes into that. I just did an overall rectangular dimension and the holes and the corner radiuses. And all that did was just help give me a little bit of extra practice uh, making our model in there and showing it a little bit more like our actual workpiece representative. And of course I got the holes in there as well so that that's all i wanted to point out was that i i used this right here i just made this simple hand sketch so that i'd have something to work with in there at the 
at the computer whenever we're doing our Fusion 360. So we're gonna be using a Walter half inch end mill for this. This is a brand new mill that has got a 60,000 quarter radius on it. And I think that this is gonna work really well for coming in here and doing that helical tool pattern, cleaning up the bottom once we get down in there. And that'll be that. So I'm gonna get this guy loaded up in one of our tool holders and we'll be using this guy for our machining. All right, got you at the computer again. I apologize about the poor quality video that I'm giving you of the actual computer screen. I need to educate myself a little bit better about how to actually do a screen uh, capture for you that we can share in video. I just haven't, I just haven't figured it out yet. I know it's really simple, but we'll get to it so that you guys can see this in better detail. All right, so there's uh, there's the model of the swivel base. Like I said, I didn't. I wasn't worried about trying to make it look exactly like a swivel base. I just wanted the overall picture of it. The, the meat and potatoes is the center section right there. So it's, it's two setups is all we've got. The first one is going to be the bore. So we went to two, uh, 2D. 2D bore is the selection that we chose for that. All right. And then we actually have, we also have a 2D. We use the 2D contour for the chamfer there after we finish um, counterboard it. So we'll go to setup here and go ahead and simulate so you guys can see what it's gonna look like. There's our half inch end mill and it's gonna come down and just do that, that uh, helical tool pattern. Now I do have the, the, uh, the distance on which it steps each time it comes around is set at 20 thousandths. So it's probably gonna take a little longer than I would have thought it was gonna take but I, would, I didn't want to take too long because whenever I set it to 10 thousandths, it seemed like it was going to be machining for, you know, 10, 12 minutes to get that, that path done that I just showed you. So I adjusted it to 20 thousandths per revolution as the step down. And maybe that's going to end up leaving a pretty decent looking finish. I'm not really sure because I haven't done it yet. So this is something that I definitely got to play with is the uh, optimal settings for creating a nice... Uh, a nice finish in here. You know, this, this finish is what we're talking about right there. Obviously, that's computer simulation, but I think it's going to look pretty decent uh, once we actually get in there and cut it. Let me go ahead and do this again while, while we're talking about it. So 20 thousandths per revolution is, is our, you know, feed movement there. And we're going to find out if that's going to turn out to be a good finish. We're only doing one part, so it really doesn't matter how long it takes. And you know, we'll do a, we'll do like a time-lapse video whenever we're showing that machining. And then once it gets down to the bottom, we'll slow this down a little bit. Once we get down to the bottom, it's actually going to cut the floor. It's going to take it down that 50 thou that we wanted. There it is. Cleans up the bottom. Now it changes colors because it's showing the model. Uh, the other, we've got two models. We got one that's sized for the cast iron and we got another one sized for our finish, which is the green color here. But uh, chamfer mill will come in here at the end, just do a 10th aisle chamfer on that. And that is essentially all that we got to do right there. Uh, got to get it in the machine. It doesn't even matter which way this is oriented because we're just working on that one circular feature right there in the middle. But so I'll just set this down on the mill table, eyeball it nice and square. We're going to have a toe clamp on each side right there. We're going right to the middle, so we shouldn't have any worries about tool clamps being in the way for our retract height or anything like that. Just clamp it down, probe the center, probe this surface since we're going to be working off this machine face, and I think it's going to be ready to go. So let's go to the machine and see if we can make this job happen. I want to use tool number one. We've already got a half inch end mill installed in that, but I want to change that out to the one with the corner radius. So we're going to go ahead and grab that, grab that tool. We're going to go over to the Heimer power clamp and get that tool out and shrink the new one in. I put quite a bit of cutting time on that one there. Be cool to uh, inspect it and see what kind of wear we have in that tool. Our tools need to be fairly clean and remove the oils whenever we're using the uh, shrink fit machine. So I like to give them a clean down with the universal degreaser there. That 
that'll help reduce the smoke and fumes that it's putting off because of the oil that's on the surface. Dries really quick and easy. Got our holder nice and clean. We've already got the proper disc installed here. It's the number three. Oh, that's the wrong one. I didn't grab the right one, sorry. There we go. So these guys right here are just your cooling sleeves, uh, size corresponding to the to the uh, the holder that you're using. And there's a there's a coil down inside here that circulates uh, refrigerant coolant, just like the like the engine in, in your car that has coolant in it. Same thing. That's what these hoses are for. And so the coolant flows through this, helping to dissipate the heat from the tool very quickly and efficiently as it just continues to circulate nice cold coolant through there. Now this usually only takes, I would say anywhere from about 30 seconds to a minute, depending on the size of the holder. Some of the big holders, you know, it may take a little bit longer, but the benefit of that, that Heimer's developed with this is that it, it cools the tool nice and evenly and keeps it from being distorted in some way versus uh, some other methods where people blow air on it and things like that. So it works really good. So I don't know, that's probably been about 30 seconds. And see, it's warm to the touch, but it's not hot anymore. So that's why these cooling sleeves work really well. So now it's ready to go ahead and uh, heat up again and put our new tool in there. All right, there's, this is gonna be our tool that we replace it with. And it counts down whenever you push this button. What I like to do is hold the cutter because you can kind of position up and down the way you want to. You can definitely adjust. There's a set screw in these holders. You can adjust the bottom end so that it drops in there where you want. But for, for ease of assembly, just hold it in there for a few seconds until it captures it and then move it over to the coolant sleeve. Once the light goes off, it's ready. Take our end mill, slide her down in there. I'm just gonna hold it, kind of move it a little bit. There we go, got it captured. Take our sleeve, drop it on there. Coolant sleeve's been on there about a minute. You, you might be able to hear the, the pump running out. It's kind of circulating that coolant through the coil. So let's see where it's where it's at. Oh yeah, see, you can put your hand on it. So about a minute, it's got it cooled down nice and comfy for the for the hand. All right, now we can go to the machine and get her get her touched off. So in our controller, we're going to go to run program and an F11 tool set. Press cycle start. All right, tool number to offset is gonna to be tool number one. That's the, that's the active tool that we have in there. So we're gonna hit enter. And then do you want length or length in diameter? I actually would like to touch off the diameter on this one. We know it's gonna be right at the 0.5, but it could be just a little bit over or under. So we'll do number one for length and diameter. Enter, and it's going to move the tool setter over there under the spindle. And then hand wheel mode, you got a hand wheel over the top of the tool setter and press enter. So Z, take it down to where it's about a quarter inch above the tool setter. And then we'll head enter. set our end length now we're going to work on the diameter all right so we're at hand wheel mode we're going to hand wheel over 
to the side of the probe there. A little bit further away. And even though it doesn't look like it, the cutter's actually running in reverse there. That's how they designed the software. Alright, press enter. According to our Renishaw tool setter, there's our length 4.7353 and our diameter is 0.5007, so 7 tenths over your nominal half inch diameter there. All right, we've already got the table nice and clean, just making sure there's nothing else there. Here's our face that we're going to be setting it down on right there. Doesn't really matter where it's going to be, we'll just let it live somewhere about there in the middle. So as far as holding it, I'm just going to use a couple of toe clamps. The casting, we'll have to reach in here a little bit so that we're pushing down on that area of the casting, not the edge, but over here where it touches the, the table. Let me get those, I'll show you how I'm going to clamp it down because I don't know if I'm going to use a toe clamp or one of those uh, right height clamps yet. I think we're going to go with the right height style of clamps here. These guys, I really love using these. So we'll be able to reach in here where we need to clamp down. We just got to get it kind of centered up over a stud hole. So looks like we're going to have to bring it down. That one's lining up with a, a stud hole right there pretty good. And I think we can get one there as well. And it should be over the solid part of the casting. That should work pretty good. You've got to find a couple studs. So anytime I'm doing these clamping methods like this, especially on this fixture plate, I like to use this brass shim stock between the work surface and the clamp and the fixture plate and the clamp there as well. This is 25 thou shim stock, brass shim stock. You can use aluminum, copper, just anything to kind of help keep the uh, your, your finished surface from being marred up by the clamping forces there. I think that's going to work out. So I need to take, I keep a pick right here on the, the workbench. There's that guy right there so that you can pull these little plugs out of the hole, just like that. All right, and I'll do the same thing right here. Where's that one at? Looks like it's this one. I found that the little pick that's got Sort of the bent uh, end on it does a pretty good job of pulling those plugs out. I think that looks like a pretty clean setup right there. We shouldn't have any problems with our tool getting anywhere near these clamps right there. And when we finish the machining, it always retracts in Z, then it comes forward. So we'll be good to, good to go. We'll go ahead and get our Renishaw probe set up and go ahead. We're going to use the bore cycle to find uh, XY center. And then since we're working off this machine face, this is going to be our Z0. And we'll touch off on that. Putting our tool one away. And we'll get the tool 99. This is our Renishaw. Keep it down here in the cabinet. Get her down to about 0.3 away from your work surface and then we can start our program. This is a single service probe operation, Z-axis, G54. 
Distance to part is negative 0.3 and Z position zero. Let's run it. So now let's hand wheel it over to the middle of the bore. It should be down in the bore and I'm just kind of eyeballing the middle of it. That looks, looks close enough for our bore operation. Got a probe down in the bore. We're running the uh, bore operation. Diameter 1.377, G54, X0, Y0. And we've got the probe down into the depth. So we're hit, ready to hit cycle start. So what I'm doing is by my typical practice run that I feel comfortable trying every time we run a new program is that is setting the, uh, the Z up higher than the workpiece and going through sort of a trial and make sure that everything is working pretty good. I kind of eyeball it and make sure that the, uh, let me turn that light off there, it always blows it out. I get in there and it looks like the, the tool is right on the edge like it's supposed to be and all that good stuff. So it's just a good way to check it before we get started. I don't know if a lot of you guys practice this, but it seems to be a really, really easy method to kind of double check your setup before you actually go down to your, to your finished stock height where you're gonna start machining at. Got the graphics brought up so you guys can kind of see what the tool path looks like there. Just finished it. Oh, I've got optional stop set up. Now it's gonna to grab tool number six for our chamfer. All right, there it is. Looks like our completed cycle time is six minutes and 21 seconds. So of course that can be adjusted for this finish right here. But since we only have one part, I'm just gonna leave it right where it's at and see what kind of finish that we can get on that. So it's time to go ahead and adjust our coordinates. We'll go ahead and do that right now. Go to perimeters chords and then right here our Z we got it set two inches I'm gonna hit zero and there we go now we're ready to actually run this program run the program and start it is ready to go so let's give it a shot hopefully we're not gonna have any kind of crash we'll have a good part after we're done all right guys here we go I'm gonna go ahead and start program I'm going to kind of walk it into the first little bit of the cuts easily and make sure everything's good. If it's good, I'll go ahead and bring it up to 100% rapid. The nozzle is a little bit low. Go for it.
That went really nice, guys. Be careful with this chamfer, make sure it's good. I'm gonna slow it down. I couldn't, I did not catch that in time. Man. Man, the helical pattern went perfect and it looks good and that chamfer was wrong. I didn't have something right there. It cut way too deep. I don't know what I did. It did not show that in the preview. So I don't know what I did wrong there. So that's, I'm gonna have to go back and, and research and find out what happened, why that chamfer as deep as it is but it did not show that in the simulation man but i do have the swivel bolt right here i think it's still going to be okay it's just it just looks bad it looks wrong should i say it doesn't look bad so that's going to work you can see the diameter of our swivel bolt it's still going to cover that up as i said this doesn't actually pull down right there it's going to be lifted up about 25 thousandths off of that. So other than cutting the chamfer deeper than what we wanted, the program worked really well. I like the way that this sidewall looks right there. So I think our, I think our selection on our uh, feed per revolution worked out pretty good with that 20 thou. I just got to get in there and figure out what I did. So I'm going to do that now. I want to go do some research and find out why it did not cut that chamfer to the proper tip because I only had it set at ten thousandths but honestly uh, whenever it came in it was really hard to see that cut and I honestly I thought it was where it needed to be so I brought it up to 100% by the time I looked down here and it was already about a quarter way around it was already cut so there was no stopping it really so I just let it finish out so that it, we wouldn't have an uneven cut right there a little bit of a bummer but the, I'm really happy with the, the way the end mill did the side and the and the, uh, the face down in there. It looks pretty good. Okay, I, I came in here to Fusion and I quickly figured out what I did wrong. This is totally my fault. I messed this up. And let me show you what I found. So I went to our 2D contour and edit and went right over here to passes. Scroll down and there it is. Bam. Chamfer width. I mistyped it. I wanted a 10,000th chamfer width, but I accidentally instead put 0.1 instead of 0.01. So the width is at 100,000. That's why it cut. It makes sense on why I cut it now because I thought that I had put a 0.0. I thought I had that set at 10,000. So, you know, this is just the kind of stuff that you have to experience whenever you're trying to learn this kind of work. And the more that you, that you learn, the better that you get. So this is definitely something that's going to stick with me now on being sure that I kind of like double check some of these dimensions like I put in there. But the other problem is that when we did the, when we did the uh, simulation, it did not show that. So we'll play that again. We'll go ahead and simulate it. You can see right there, it doesn't show that on the simulation. But if you come over here and we turn off our our finish and ask cast stock bodies. Now you can see it in there. I did not catch that before. Play it now. Now you can see that's that hundred thousandths width there that it cut in that chamfer. I just totally missed that. Did not see that the first time. Totally missed the number. So, you know, what do you do? You just got to uh, take it in stride. And luckily we have a part that is not damaged where we can't use it. It just visually, the chamfer doesn't look right down in there, but it's still going to be a really good functional part and we're still going to use it just like it is. So, you know, chalk it up as a learning experience here as I move forward and something else that I need to be cautious about whenever we're in here doing our CAD work. So let's go out there and actually fit the swivel base to the main body together with our swivel bolt and see how everything fits together.
All right, there's our main body of the vise. And our swivel base here. That's where it'll sit. We got our swivel bolt. We'll be able to just snug it up. It doesn't have to be locked in tight, but tighten it up just like that. And there we have it. It's below the surface. And then that gap that is built in so that it keeps it from binding up and pulling it together. There's your 25 thou clearance down in there. Just looking around the edge. It looks like everything's lining up good. Centered up well. Man, it feels good to see this uh, starting to go together to where the some of the final machining is finished off on this guy. I want to do a partial assembly on this thing to kind of see how everything looks fitted together. We'll have our uh, our locking bolts on there. So these are the these are the clamps that uh, go into the hardtail vise. All right, I'm sure they're cast iron. And you've got this access hole which you probably saw right there whenever we had it upside down. So this is where you actually install this. But I'm realizing that it's a little, it's a little tricky to get them lined up if you, if you just do it right here. So, because gravity's got it tight against those bevels. So if we do like this, let's just set it up here. And go ahead and stick them in that slot that way, run it around. I don't know, that may not work either. It may not work either unless we set this down. Maybe if we set this down and then put the main body on top. It's just getting everything lined up is, is the problem there. I don't know, let me, let me see if I can figure out the best way to tackle this. Because as soon as I move this, it's probably gonna rotate. But I'll tell you what, that looks like it's pretty well straight in line. Let me see if I can do it this way. And they kind of stay where they need to where they need to be. That might work. That way we can get this in. Don't have to pick it back up. And then, so I think I'm just going to do it while it's upside down. All right, so here is your, here's your parts, the hardware for the clamps. This guy right there looks, looks just like the meatball of the, uh, the end of the spindle there, okay? Well, I got that one lined up. Let's see if this one's going to line up. That one's not going to play nice. So that one definitely moved right there. All right. So we'll just go ahead and lay the thing over and line it up. Definitely got it lined up that time. Maybe that's how we could have done it all along. You know, it's the first time I've ever put one of these things together. Mm, okay. And then for the, 
the handles they look like little dumbbells but they just screw together like that all right got a little inconsistency in the casting inside that inside that uh whatever you would call that inside there the slot where the the clamps are there it is this is the first time that the main body and the swivel base has been together like this assembled and there we go Everything looks just like it's supposed to. It looks just like the other guy over here. <clears throat> there it is clamped up. Nice. A little too heavy to be trying to pick up now with both of them together. Well, I think we're about finished up with this project in this video anyway, and I'm happy to see this finally going together. I am upset about the error that I made on that, but that was totally my fault, and it's something I'm gonna learn from. Luckily, that was not anything that was gonna uh, cause us not to be able to use the swivel base on there, and we could go ahead and go forward with the assembly. So it's looking good. Everything's fitting together just like it's supposed to. And I reminded myself of a couple things that I, that I think I want to do extra on this as well, just like we did that uh, counterbore in this video here. So these, these ears out here where you mount it down, like you can mount it on the table or wherever, but these, um, these ears, I think I'd like to set, these guys, set the swivel base up again on the mill and actually come in here and machine this area to make that look nice and flat there. It's not necessary whatsoever. That's not done to the ones that you would purchase from Fireball Tools. But since this is a custom one-off vise that I'm building myself here, I think I'd like to go ahead and, and clean that up a little bit. I also think it would probably work good if we do that up here in this boss area as well, where the meatball, you know, the clamp tightens down, where this face actually meets the casting. I think it would look a little bit better if we come in there and just uh, had a nice face cut across that, make it look nice and machined. Just a little extra thing that we can do to kind of dress up the, the vise and make it a little bit more custom, you know? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep those in mind. I think if we do this, we'll just go over to our manual mill and uh, put a face mill in there and just uh, cut one ear at a time, go around and, and cut it. So if we do that, I'll definitely bring you guys back to see how we're gonna do that. but. I think this is gonna finish up this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. It got tight right there. And we'll see you again on the next video. We got several more uh, steps to take along the way. We've got the tail portion that we're gonna be machining that bolts on back here. So this is like the next big setup is getting that tail portion machined so we can get that bolted on. And uh, once we get that tail portion machined, we'll, we'll have that finished. And the last step basically is gonna be taking this guy to the home shop, setting it up in the shaper so we can come inside here and cut this so that our dynamic jaw will fit through there, all right? So we'll see you guys on the next project.